Good morning, fifth graders. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, we're going to continue um, reading nonfiction this week, and we're going to build on a lesson that we actually had last week. Um, we talked last week about unlocking a new vocabulary using background knowledge and context clues. Um, now we're going to expand upon that. One of the best uh, reasons to read nonfiction is to um, in improve your vocabulary, uh, your knowledge of vocabulary. So today we're going to continue to build vocabulary. We're going to use the background knowledge and context clues again. Uh, background knowledge, remember, is based on what you've read in the past and what you've learned in the past. Um, you can understand words. Context clues, you use the sentences uh, before and after a word, and sometimes whole paragraphs before and after a word to understand what it means. Uh, but we're also going to jump to the next step, uh, kind of like the what if you still can't figure it out. And if you want to verify what a word means, uh, we're going to use a part of the book called the glossary. Um, as you probably know, a glossary can be found typically toward the back of a book, such as this. But also, there is another um, uh, part of a nonfiction book that I particularly like, and that's called The Index. So here's what I want you to think about today. Um, as you're reading nonfiction, you should read with sticky notes around or with a notebook. And when you come to a word that is a bit unfamiliar, jot it down. That's what you're going to be doing today, a little bit later. Um, so you're going to jot down words that you don't quite understand. Um, even if you figure them out along the way using context clues, just jot them down. And then again, if you need to verify later, you can check the glossary um, or you can check with, with a, a friend or an adult. So here we go. Um, we're going to focus on lizards. That is a nonfiction book. Um, it's reference. There's some story language in it just to keep it interesting, but it's not necessarily literary nonfiction. It's, refer it's a reference uh, book because it's basically just facts. So we have headings and facts. Yes, they do name the lizard in, the, in this reference book just to make it interesting for students, but it's mainly a reference book. And <clears throat> what I did is I read, before I started this video, I read and I jotted down some words that I thought, okay, we can use background knowledge to figure out. Um, we can use context clues. And then we can also use the index or the glossary to figure out what the words mean. Um, <clears throat> so this is called Lizards and Meet Joe Lizard. I might've read a little bit of this in the past, uh, but I'm going to read a few pages of it today. Your average Joe Lizard is a Western fence lizard, but his fans call him blue belly. He's about three and a half inches, nine centimeters long, not counting that handsome tail and is, a, is about as typical a lizard as you can get. Let's start with the scaly skin. Those scales make Joe look kind of cool, but they are mighty useful as well. They're made from keratin, the same stuff as your fingernails, and are tough enough to keep Joe from getting cut or scratched. So right away, keratin was a vocabulary word I picked out. And I wrote it on the chart, just like you're going to be doing in your... Um, digital notebook, uh, but I decided to jot that down and I'm going to try to figure out what that word means, keratin. So again, um, I want to use background knowledge. Um, I don't have background knowledge of keratin. I've never heard of that word before, all right? So now I want to use context clues. Um, okay, those scales make Joe look kind of cool, but they are mighty useful. They're made of keratin, the same stuff as your fingernails. Okay, I understand that it's, it's a texture. It's like, a, it's like your, what your fingernails feel like and are tough enough to keep Joe from getting cut or scratched. They also help prevent Joe's body from losing moisture. All right, so I would say that keratin is kind of like a surface, a surface of the scales that feel like your fingernails. What I'm gonna do is I'm jotting it down and then we're going to verify later I don't need to stop here because I still understand what is happening or, what, or I understand the facts in this nonfiction book. So don't stop. We'll jot it down in a sticky note, in my case, the whiteboard, and then we're going to check it at the end just to verify so we can continue to build our vocabulary and maybe use it, which would be fantastic using our language. This comes in handy seeing as how lizards live in some of the world's driest places, including Joe's home in Southern California. 
Joe's skin blends in well with his surroundings. Camouflage is extremely, extremely popular in the lizard world. It helps lizards hide from enemies and sneak up on prey. All right, now camouflage, I've heard of that before, but I decided that's a word I wanna jot down because I've heard of it before, but I do understand that not everybody, not all fifth graders like to read nonfiction. Um, not all fifth graders like to read about animals. So I jotted it down because I thought that would be a word to highlight. So first things first, here's what I know about camouflage. I'm gonna use my background knowledge. I know in the military, military men and women uh, will dress in camouflage to make it more difficult for somebody to see them. I've also heard of other animals using camouflage. Um, the deer basically in the backyard, they kind of are camouflage because they blend into the woods, the trees. They kind of have the same color as the bark, very similar to the bark on the trees, right? And some of the undergrowth. So I, I have background knowledge on that. And using my context clues, I can pretty much figure out that camouflage means something that it's an adaptation. I know adaptation because I've read about animals before that helps an animal blend in. And sure enough, it says Joe's scaly skin blends in with well with his surroundings. Camouflage is extremely popular in the lizard world. It helps lizards hide from their enemies and sneak up on prey. Flip Joe lizard over though, and you'll discover why his fans call him blue belly. Isn't that the prettiest rib cage you've ever seen? Okay, silly. Um, herpetologists, people who study reptiles and amphibians, think Joe Lizard flashes his bright blue colors to attract mates and warn intruders to stay out of, out of his territory. All right, herpetologists. Now, a lot of times in nonfiction, you'll see right after the word, they'll give the definition. So it says herpetologist dash people who study reptiles and amphibians. Okay, I know that, that herpetologist based on uh, the definition right after it are people who study reptiles and amphibians, but cool word, cool thing to remember, herpetologists. Uh, but again, we'll verify it a little bit later with the glossary if it's in the glossary. Speaking of territories, Joe's territory is where he hunts and goes courting for female lizards. Joe also spends a lot of time there basking or lying around in the sun. Don't call him Lazy Joe though. Joe is an ectotherm, an animal that can make its own heat. Oh good, I wrote ectotherm down. I thought that was a cool word to pull out. And once again, they do us a favor. Right after the word, they have a little dash. And sometimes they have the word or. Sometimes you'll see the word or after it to, when they're about to, that signals when they're about to tell you the definition. An animal that can't make its own heat. Hmm. He has to bask. To rate, he has to bask in the sun to raise his body temperature. Like most lizards, Joe eats just about anything he can stuff down his gullet. Insects, spiders, scorpions, centipedes, sometimes even other lizards. Of course, he's on the menu too. So he wants to watch his scaly back. Snakes, cats, roadrunners, and other predators are always on the prowl. They're always on the prowl looking for Joe. If the, if the lizard falls into the clutches of an enemy, he may resort to one of his coolest tricks, dropping his tail. With luck, this startles the predator and allows Joe to make a getaway. What about the tail? Joe will miss it, but he'll soon get busy growing a new one. If you think Joe's cool, just wait till you meet some of Just wait till you meet some of the others. All right. So now I pulled out four words, camouflage, herpetologist, ectotherm, and keratin. Two of the words had the definitions right after them. The other two words, I use context clues. But now what I want to do is I want to go back to the... Um, index first. And when I look at the index in the back of the book, let's see if, if all of the words are in there. Oh, I see camouflage is in the index. And then it tells me the pages. 
page 8, 16, 23, 37. Well, I didn't read 16, 23, 37 today, <clears throat> but I can look ahead just to be sure I know what camouflage means. It says it's on page 8, all right? That's what I just read. And I'm going to check if it's in the glossary. Well, the glossary, like a dictionary, is in alphabetical order, all right? And in the glossary, it says col uh, coloration or other type of disguise that allows an animal to blend in with its surroundings and go undetected by predators. All right, that makes sense. It basically means to blend in, to be able to hide almost in plain sight, all right? Now, let's take a look at the next word. It was herpetologist, okay? They told us right on the page what herpetologist means, but let's see if I can find it in my index and check where I can find it in the book. Herpetologist, uh, let's see if it's here. It's not in my index, but maybe it's in the glossary. Sure enough, here it is, herpetologist, as luck would have it, a scientist who studies reptiles or amphibians. I hope you use that word, herpetologist, next time you're talking about reptiles and amphibians. It's a scientist. Ologist tells you that it's a person who's, who studies something, all right? And they study <clears throat> reptiles and amphibians. The next word was ectotherm. So I look back to my index just to find where in the book I can find ectotherm. Let's see, oh, here it is. I can find it on page eight, 26, and 28, ectotherms. All right, what I read today was page eight. So I would look there again if I needed to. And I can also look at the glossary just to be sure that my definition was correct. And here it is, an animal that can't make its own body heat. Fantastic. So uh, we, we learned about that in the actual chapter, but I can also check with the glossary. And finally, keratin. Keratin was the last word I pulled out from uh, the pages I read today. So let's check. Sure enough, here it is in the index. If I want to go back and read in context about keratin, it's on page eight. And let's see if I have it over in my glossary. Sure enough, I do. Nice. Keratin, a strong protein that helps form a lizard scales. Okay, it's basically what the lizard scales are made of. All right, so I verified all of my words. So I used my background knowledge, if you remember from camouflage, I used context clues for a couple of them. I believe it was the um, ectotherm and camouflage. Um, then I used the glossary for, for herpetologists and keratin. But if you remember, it also said, it gave you a little dash after the word right in the chapter and it gave me the definition there. But it's always nice to verify. So after <clears throat> you've jotted down words, more uh, at least two more vocabulary words from your nonfiction book. Again, if you are finished your, a nonfiction book, go to Epic, pick another one, get started, find something you're interested in. And then what, I, then what you're going to do in your digital notebook today, you're going to find two words that are unfamiliar to you or two words that you like to use in, when talking about the topic, but you, and you know a little bit about it, but you really want to verify the meaning. So two of the words, uh, if your um, nonfiction book has a glossary, great. If not, use a dictionary online or an old fashioned dictionary in your house, or you can use your context clues and background knowledge to figure it out. So in today's course, you'll see a description of what I want you to do on the digital notebook. Enjoy learn and use some of the new vocabulary words that you've learned. Impress somebody.